Africa may have survived this current global financial shakeup, but it could suffer in the long term. Hello, I'm Dimyake Mwakalielie. And I'm Vincent McCorey, also ahead, giving more to Africa, the Bush legacy. All this and more on today's In Focus. another great show today. Wow, what a great show. I know we have a lot of information ahead. We have a lot of information. First, our lead story. The crisis that has shaken world financial and stock markets so far has not directly affected most African nations. But African economists say the continent could experience considerable long-term repercussions as lending and investment activities tighten in the industrialized world. VOA Scott Bob reports from Johannesburg. African financial institutions so far have been spared the market collapses seen in the industrialized world. Economists say this is because African banks have not engaged in high-risk lending, especially in the housing market. But the head of Pan-African Capital Holdings in Johannesburg, Wiseman Nkuchlu, says the crisis is likely to hurt African economies, which had been growing an average of more than 5% a year. We're very concerned. The impact is not uh, noticeable at the moment but we are worried that the flows that have been responsible for the high levels of growth may actually decline in the coming years if the crisis continues. Economists warn a recession in the developed world will lower demand for Africa's exports and hurt foreign investment. Also, Africans working abroad may reduce remittances, the money they send home to their families. These developments are likely because African economies are unavoidably tied to the global economy. Kenyan economist Robert Shaw. We will get a bit of everything, a bit of the financial fallout, a bit of the, 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 the stock exchange uh, fallout, uh, a bit of the recession in each of these countries, and, uh, you know, and, and, and um, less remittances, less investments, etc. Shaw says funding for development and social programs is also likely to fall as budgets are tightened in Africa and in the international donor community. But economist Nkuchlu is hopeful that the industrialized nations will remain dedicated to improving the quality of life in Africa. The commitments and the relationship between the developed world and, and Africa in particular has matured, reached a point where the, 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 the commitments are likely to be sustained even one, even uh, under these difficult circumstances, possibly at a slightly reduced, uh, uh, slightly reduced levels. A recession could have some positive effects. Prices for food, fuel, and other basic goods may fall, easing the stress on household pocketbooks. And interest rates may decline, lowering the cost of borrowing. Yet Shaw warns that while almost everyone in the world will feel the effects of the crisis, the poor will be hit the hardest. And those people have already been impacted um, ne very negatively in th this year by what happened earlier in the year by the massive inflation. Uh, the price of food, uh, price of transport, all, all these basics have, have galloped ahead. So anything that happens from this will impact them even worse. Experts say the greatest threat to most Africans has always been hunger and poverty. And the investment needed to feed people and create jobs, they say, is just a fraction of what is being spent to ease the global financial crisis. Scott Bob, VOA News, Johannesburg. Well, joining us to talk about financial aid for development and social programs in Africa is Janine Scott, Senior Vice President, Africa. Welcome very much to our show. Thank you. Now, in our story, you saw um, our reporter says that one of the things uh, that may be impacted by the world financial crisis in Africa is financing for development and social programs. Uh, as an organization, how far, how much is Africa concerned about the possibility of funds drying up or just being held? I think that we probably will witness some form of constriction in terms of financing for development programs throughout the continent of Africa, indeed throughout the world. I think there are numbers of programs that are ongoing that we will have to take a second look at and we will have to see what levels we will be able to continue to provide um, at various levels. But in general, I think there may be a slowing down, there may be an impact, and it will be in terms of looking at priorities and how to stretch those priorities such that we continue to have impacts where we are making impacts currently. 
-hmm. You know, when we talk about social programs, um, Africa, as we know, is about to honor President Bush for his role in Africa over his, uh, his two-year term here, over his two-term mm -hmm. period in the U.S. Programs like the ones he's been funding to fight mm -hmm. AIDS, um, boost education, you mm -hmm. know, help in the water sanitation system. Mm -hmm. How safe are they, regardless of who comes into office? Uh, I think that uh, based on the levels of programming that we've seen throughout uh, the Bush administration for Africa, that any incoming president will probably be well placed to at least continue at the same levels, if not, where possible, continue to expand these programs. The programs have been significant. They have been historic in proportion compared to other administrations administrations that we've seen uh, placing development and humanitarian assistance in Africa. And I think any president coming in will be very well placed to carry these programs forward and to see how they may be able to strengthen and deepen some of them. If now, now some, uh, some actually have been so surprised that this really happened. They didn't expect so much to be done under the Bush administration. What really, in your assessment, led to him devoting so much uh, finances for African programs? I think that President Bush has surrounded himself with a very good team of advisors when it comes to development and humanitarian issues on, African, uh, on the African continent. And I think as a result of that, they have been able to help him craft a strategy and uh, programs that have really looked at going to the root of, of the problem. We have everything that ranges, as you said, from health issues, HIV, AIDS, um, malaria initiatives. We also have things that look at financial and private sector development issues. We have other types of programs that are looking at how to simply combat poverty, how to uh, provide more education for girls. When you look at the levels of funding as well, astronomical in terms of development assistance and humanitarian programming. Um, I think that th there is no other way to, to say that he has not had a legacy or an impact on Africa with the types of programs that he has, he has financed. Tell us about AfriCare and organizations such as AfriCare and really the impact, the impact that they've made on the continent and their relevance today. Uh, I think uh, more than ever in its 38-year history, AfriCare is uh, very relevant to Africa. We have uh, worked in some 36 countries. We have programs today in at least 25 countries on the continent of Africa. We've transferred over $700 million of uh, assistance to uh, the continent, and we are working in education, in water and sanitation, in agriculture, and in health wow. programs. We'll, we'll, we'll be definitely uh, watching uh, events as they unfold and see how the next president will handle these issues. Our many thanks to Janine Scott for joining us. Janine Scott is from Africa as a senior vice president. Well, uh, it's a time for a break, isn't it? It's now time for a break. But first, we also want to hear from you. So send us an email at voanews.com and uh, tell us what you think about our programs. And next time, you might just see your response on one of our shows.